G'day ladies and gentlemen, how are you all doing? Scott at 49 here with you once again for another installment in the How to Play Warhammer 40,000 series. Now this is the 12th video in the series where we've been covering off the different ways you can play the game, what's involved with army list building and everything you need to consider with that, as well as the way to play the game in terms of the phase of the game. And today we are covering the last phase of the game, which is the morale phase. So before we get into the video, ladies and gentlemen, I thank everyone who has subscribed to the channel so far. We've already hit 100 subs, which is awesome. We'll do you something special for that coming up as well. But if you haven't already, feel free to hit this, that subscribe button as well, which would be absolutely really appreciated. But ladies and gentlemen, let's jump into it. All right, so the morale phase is broken up into two different stages, morale tests and unit coherency checks. Pretty straightforward for this phase. So morale tests, what they are is any time a unit that has suffered any casualties throughout the turn, whether that's from psychic powers, whether that's from vehicles exploding, whether that's close combat casualties, that player at the end of the turn in the morale phase must make a morale test for those units. Starting with a player whose turn it is, you alternate between selecting a unit between yourself and your opponent to make morale tests. Now, a unit that has not suffered any casualties at all doesn't need to make morale tests, but also if a unit has no models remaining on the field, it also does not need to make a morale test because the entire unit is considered as destroyed. Now, what a morale test is, it is a simple D6 roll and you add the number of models destroyed. You then compare that result to the leadership characteristic that's denoted by LD on the unit's profile to determine whether you pass or succeed. Now, if you roll on that D6 an unmodified one, it is always a success for a morale test. You don't have to take any casualties, even if the combination of the one and the, the number of casualties you've taken is beyond the leadership characteristic of the unit. Now, if the result is under the unit's leadership characteristic, then the test is successful. Also, if you roll a one, as we just said, you're successful on the test as well. However, if the result exceeds the unit's leadership value, then it does fail the morale test and you remove one model as it flees from the battlefield. Now, if a morale test was failed, what you then need to do for that unit is what's called a combat attrition test. This is a test very similar to the morale test, except you roll a D6 for every remaining model in that unit. For each one that you roll when making a combat attrition test, one additional model is removed from the unit as it is fleeing from the battle. You do also need to subtract one from the dice rolls when making combat attrition tests if the unit is below half strength. And that is defined as if it, it has got half the number of models than what the unit started with. Once you have completed all of one player's morale test, because of course, you could have morale tests in your turn as well as your opponent could have morale tests in your turn because of you know shooting you've done and close combat damage for both of you. Then the other player just resolves all of their remaining morale tests. There's no need to alternate because the other player has got no more that need to be made. After all morale tests have been resolved, each player must check every unit's unit coherency if they are made up of multiple models. So you need to make sure that if they're a unit between one and five models, that they're within two inches of another model in their unit. If they're six or more, then you're within two inches of two or more models within that unit. Very similar to what we covered previously about unit coherency. You remove any models one at a time that are outside the unit coherency rules for that unit. So they've got to be, if it's a unit of six or more models, they've got to be within two inches of two or more models. Uh, and if they're not, that model has to be removed and you remove them one by one until you get to a point where you've got all the models fulfilling those unit coherency rules. Now, once you've done all your unit coherency checks and generally this is stuff for something done in movement uh, and you also have to be conscious of it with charges and pilings and consolidations, uh, you generally don't see this step covered all too often in events because people know that you're trying to maintain coherency as best as possible. But there are rare circumstances where it will occur, so it's something to keep an eye out for. But once you have done that at the morale phase, you then pass the turn to your opponent for them to go through their turn for the game. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, well, I hope that was able to give you a clear explanation of the morale phase. I know it was pretty short and sweet, 
but I hope that it was nice and clear in terms of what's involved in making any morale or combat attrition tests, as well as the impact of actually not having models within unit coherency during your games and keeping that in mind as best as you possibly can. Now, if you do have any questions at all, feel free to ask me down in the comments section below. If you haven't already, feel free to hit that like and subscribe button on the video as well. That'd be greatly appreciated. And if you do have any questions, I'll do my best to answer them. If you don't want to ask them here, feel free to come by to my Twitch channel where I'm live on Tuesday and Friday nights and Saturday afternoons, Australian Eastern Standard Time. And we do a bunch of hobby sessions, live games and tournament coverage as well. And we'll, we'll do our best to answer it there, both myself and my mods. As well, if you can't drop by whilst we're live, feel free to jump in my Discord where I've got over 120 members now. And it's a Boston community from all across the globe. So if I'm asleep, I'm sure someone in the community will be able to help answer your questions. But ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.